we're back here on a beach in Denmark fishing for sea trout. And whenever you're fishing in Denmark, wind is always going to be a problem. And sometimes you will need to be able to cast into the wind. Perhaps the wind changes along the day, or perhaps the fish are simply gathered on the side of the lake or a beach where the wind is coming onto. And being able to cast into the wind is of course a great advantage, whether you're fishing on the beach, as we are here, or in a lake, or even on a river. So let's have a look at some of the techniques involved in casting into the wind. When you're casting into the wind, you need to pay attention to three things. First of all, you want to cast a tight loop. The tighter the loop, the less wind resistance it will have. That will make it easier for you to beat the wind. Next, you want to cast a high line speed. The higher the line speed, the further you'll be able to cast into the wind. And finally, you must remember to angle the trajectory of your loop a little bit downwards in relation to the water surface. If you, for instance, cast a little bit upwards into the wind, the wind will simply blow back the line towards you once it straightens. But if you angle your trajectory downwards just a little bit, allowing the leader to stretch out fully just before it touches the water surface, it will touch the water surface the second it straightens and it won't be blown back towards you. Now, when you angle your trajectory downwards in the forward cast, you must angle the trajectory of your back cast a little bit upwards. So to sum it up, casting into the wind, you need tight loop, high line speed, a high back cast, and a low forward cast. Even though we are on a Danish beach where we sometimes have a lot of wind, today there's only a slight breeze coming towards us. But nonetheless, I can still show you the technique involved in casting into the wind. So let's first have a look at the low trajectory of the forward cast. If I have a too low trajectory, the line will simply crash into the surface and I won't reach the maximum casting length. If my trajectory is too high, you will simply find that the cast goes away and collapses on you because it gets blown back by the wind. With a little bit of practice, you will get good at judging the trajectory needed in your forward cast to allow the line to extend fully just before it catches the surface. As I said earlier, under the basic overhead cast, you still need to observe the rule of the 180 degrees. So that means when I need a low trajectory on my forward cast to cast into the wind, I will have to angle my back cast a little bit upwards so that both the forward cast and the back cast happens in the same plane. Now to obtain that high back cast, I simply stop my rod a little bit earlier in the back cast like this. Here I'm simply casting a normal overhead cast. And now I begin by stopping the rod a little bit higher and a little bit earlier. I angle the back cast upwards at the same time angling the forward cast downwards and thus obtaining that low trajectory that's needed to cast into the wind. Thankfully, the wind isn't always blowing onto the shore where you're standing. Often in a situation like this, you have the wind coming from either one side or the other. 
In this case, it's coming from my left, blowing to the right. And while that's not the biggest problem, especially when you're fishing with a shooting head, a strong side wind can blow the line right out of your line tray and place the line in a big bow on the water. That gives you a very bad contact to the fly, but there is a very easy fix. I simply make a reachment into the wind when I deliver my fly. Now to show you how I'm using this bright orange line because it's a lot easier for you to see. I stop the rod and I simply reach into the wind. And now when I bring my rod back, just a few retrieves and I have a straight line connection to my fly. Wind from the left, assuming that you're a right-handed caster, isn't a big problem. Wind from the right, however, is a bigger problem. The wind will blow the line and the fly onto your body and you risk hooking yourself. The fix, however, is not that complicated. The simplest way that most people have success with is to simply turn around and deliver your fly on the back cast. Today, if I was fishing, I would be casting that way because that's where the fish are. But the wind is coming from that side. So to demonstrate the problem, I'll have to cast onto the shore, but I think you'll get my point anyway. So to avoid the wind blowing the line into my right shoulder, I can simply turn around. Now remember that my forward cast is going towards the shore and I simply deliver on the back cast. That keeps me safe and it keeps the fly away from me. Another way of solving the problem with the wind blowing onto your casting arm is to simply Instead of casting on the wind side, I simply tilt my rod over and I cast on the opposite shoulder. When you practice casting over your left shoulder, which is something that I definitely encourage you to do because it will also get you out of a lot of other trouble, you have to be very mindful of your tracking because when your hand is over on the opposite shoulder, especially when you're making your forward cast, there's a very natural tendency to let the hand drift back to its normal position, so to say. And that will give you a very poor tracking. So you really need to pay attention to the tracking that you track straight along the line where you want to cast. And that is going to take some practice, but it's well worth learning. One final solution, which most people avoid, but which some people are actually quite able to learn, is to cast with your left hand, assuming that you're a right-handed caster. Now, this is not easy, and it is going to take a lot of practice. But some people find that it's worth it, and some people learn a lot faster than others. Try it for yourself. A wind direction that most fly fishers favor is of course a tailing wind coming from behind. There's a little trick that will actually help you to cast a little bit further in a tailing wind. And that is once again observing the 180 degrees rule. If you make your forward cast a little bit higher than you normally would, you give it a little bit more time to fly and the wind can pull it along a little bit further. And of course, to achieve that, you need to lower your back cast. Just a little bit is all it takes. If you're fishing in a strong tailing wind, 
consider that you will have to use a little bit more power in the cast in order for the back cast to straighten fully and also remember that you don't need to use the same amount of power in the forward cast because in this case the wind is helping you.